I wrote my first computer program when I was in the fifth grade. And I've been working with computers ever since then. And there's one thing I know. A computer will do as it is programmed every single time. It won't deviate from its programming. It can't. This means that computers are consistently consistent. Whether it's executing program code or calculating the results of a fact set, a computer will act the same way and reach the same result every single time. Now, let's contrast that with humans. While the human brain is without a doubt the most sophisticated computing device on the planet, humans, unlike a digital computer, react differently depending on the circumstances. The time of day, the amount of stress in a situation, the person's physical or emotional health, all of these things can impact how an individual reacts. For example, most people would react differently if someone approached them with a hand outstretched like this than if it were outstretched like this. I'm a big sports fan, and another way to think about this is to look at the example of a football player. I played college football, and in my four years on the gridiron, I am proud to say that I was never sacked, I never threw an interception, and in fact, I never lost a single yard. Now, if you know anything about the game of football, you know that those are amazingly impressive statistics for a quarterback. I wasn't a quarterback. (laughs) I was a place kicker. It is true, however, that I never missed a kick in college, and yes, I did kick and hit some. This is a picture of me taken from some grainy video footage warming up before a kick. Anyway, the reason that I was able to hit all of my kicks is because of the consistency that I developed by establishing a routine and doing the same thing over and over and over again. And that's what a place kicker strives to do, establish consistency, do the same thing over and over and over. That way, all things being equal, A kick will sail straight and true every single time. But of course, in the game of football, all things are not always equal. The weather, the condition of the turf, the snap and placement of the ball, a fight with a girlfriend before the game, any of these things can impact how a player reacts, which can introduce variables into the kicking motion that can cause the kick to go awry. I wanted to establish this important distinction that computers don't make mistakes, but people do, because it forms the basis for the rest of our time together. Target, Home Depot, Marriott, Saks Fifth Avenue, Sony, Hilton, J.P. Morgan, LinkedIn, Macy's, and Panera Bread. What do all these companies have in common? No, they're not my stock portfolio. All of these companies suffered a cybersecurity breach so significant that they felt compelled to announce it publicly to warn their customers and business partners that it had occurred. And this happened despite the fact that they employed full-time cybersecurity experts and they had deployed defenses intended to be nearly impenetrable. So why, despite their best efforts, were these companies still compromised? The answer is simple, because of people like you and me, because of our humanness. You see, despite the fact that these companies had built systems and configured them in a secure way, and despite the fact that they had installed technology and developed policies to protect information, and despite thousands of hours spent training their workforce in data security measures, humans at these organizations held the keys to systems and the data that they contained. And that's still true today in nearly every company on the planet. The majority of my career has been spent in cybersecurity, designing and implementing cybersecurity programs and protections. The easiest way to describe the goal of a cybersecurity program is that it should keep private data private by preventing access to that data from unauthorized individuals. Another way to say it, your stuff should be your stuff. Nobody else should be able to see it. Sounds easy, doesn't it? Well, it isn't. There's a lot that goes into putting a cybersecurity program in place. And as we've already seen, it's clearly not easy since so many organizations are struggling with it. So why, though, despite their efforts, do companies continue to get hacked? Well, I'm about to lay it out for you. Over the next few minutes, you'll come to learn why cybersecurity is so difficult for most organizations and why the person on your left, the person on your right, or even the person in the mirror 
may be partially responsible for the fact that companies continue to get breached. Good news is, I'm also going to tell you how to stop being a part of the problem and start being a part of the solution. Before we go any further, I've got a surprise for you, but it involves audience participation, so I'd like everyone to please stand up. If you would go ahead and stand up. Thank you. Earlier today, the event organizers placed a gift for each of you under your seat, and now is the time in the program where you can turn around and retrieve your gift. So go ahead and turn around and get your gift. What do you think? Did you find it? What? It's not there. It's not, well, they, they assured me it would be there. The organizers promised me that gift would be there. I, I don't know what to say. I can't believe that you fell for my ruse. <laughs> Have a seat and I'll explain what I mean. I've been on this platform for about five minutes. And prior to today, I didn't know most of you, despite that fact, that we didn't have any real relationship, you happily carried out my request in hopes of receiving a gift. You trusted what I said because it seemed legitimate. And that, my friends, is a prime example of why you and I are the cause of most cybersecurity attacks. A key reason that hackers are so successful in compromising organizations is because people regularly fall for their cybersecurity scams. And this results in the attacker getting access to systems or getting a password that can be used to further attacks. As I've watched person after person fall victim to various cybersecurity scams over the years, I've identified three traits or characteristics of humans that make us especially susceptible to cybersecurity attack. People are curious, people are trusting and helpful, and people are uninformed. Let's take a look at each of these with some examples. The primary characteristic of humans that makes us susceptible to cybersecurity attacks is our curiosity. This curiosity has fueled the advancements in technology that we enjoy today, as well as astounding developments in healthcare that allow us to live longer and healthier lives. But this same curiosity is what causes us to ignore that little voice in our head that tells us not to click on the link or open the file. Hackers have exploited this curiosity over the years with many attacks, including things like the Anna Kornikova virus, the I Love You virus, and attacks like this one that my team has done. One of the teams that I'm responsible for conducts simulated cybersecurity testing for organizations around the world. In essence, companies hire us to break into their systems, and if we get in, we tell them how we got in and how to fix it so the bad guys can't get in. So these guys are paid to think and act like an attacker and use the same tools and techniques that attackers use. In one simple attack, my team loads some software onto USB memory drives, like this one. And they place these drives in staff break rooms, staff parking areas, smoking areas around the facilities that we're trying to target in hopes that employees will find them and pick them up. After all, who among us hasn't found a USB drive and thought, Yahtzee, free USB key! Well, if they find these drives and they plug them into a computer, the software will attempt to automatically launch. And if it's successful, it will open up a connection back to our command center where we can take control of the machine. Now, depending on how the computer is configured, the software may not automatically launch. If it doesn't, then if the user clicks on the USB drive to open up the files, a menu like the one on the screen is displayed. Clicking on any one of the files or folders in our menu will tell us what file or folder they clicked on, and it will also launch the attack. Now, which one of these files or folders do you think most people click on? That's right. Curiosity leads them to click on Vegas pics, baby, because what happens in Vegas? Vegas, Vegas. Apparently not if it's on a USB drive. The second characteristic of humans that makes us susceptible to cybersecurity attacks is our trusting and helpful nature. The nature of most people is to be accommodating, and people don't like confrontation, particularly in a business setting. Attackers know that people are unlikely to challenge someone who appears to know what they're doing or appears to have authority to be in a certain area, and they take advantage of this in several ways. I could tell you a story about one of my team members who convinced the security guard at a large medical complex to allow him to print himself his own access badge, giving him full access to the entire campus. 
Or another story about another team member who called the help desk of a large organization posing as that company's CEO and convinced the help desk technician to reset the password for the CEO's account and tell him what it was so he could use it to log in. The bottom line is the trusting and helpful nature of people, when combined with their dislike for confrontation, creates opportunities for attackers to get individuals to carry out actions on their behalf or give them access to information they shouldn't have. The third characteristic of people that makes us subject to cybersecurity attacks is the fact that we're uninformed when it comes to cybersecurity risks. What I mean by this is that people just don't understand how the things that they do make them more susceptible to attack. The best example of this is computer passwords. A computer password is designed to give the owner of the account, the authorized user, access to systems and data. And it's, by its very nature, designed to let that user through all of the cybersecurity defenses that the company has put in place to keep intruders out. So attackers know that their best avenue into a system is to get a valid username and password so they don't have to figure out how to defeat all the company's other cybersecurity measures. One technique that attackers use to get passwords is called password spraying. And it works like this. An attacker finds a web portal, like the webmail portal on the screen. Once they find this web portal, they need a username and a password. And many companies use the email address as the username for a web portal like this. So a quick scan of the internet and search of LinkedIn will typically turn up a lot of email addresses associated with a particular organization. Once the, company has e once the hacker has email addresses he can use, he then needs a password. So he'll start by guessing passwords that people commonly use. Something like password one or maybe spring 2019. This particular attack typically results in, in the hacker being able to get access to at least one of the harvested accounts. But here's the problem. Those two password examples that I used technically meet the password composition requirements that are commonly touted as acceptable because they include upper and lowercase letters, a number, and a special character. But they're relatively trivial and easy to guess. And that's the challenge that cybersecurity professionals face. One, training users to choose good passwords, and two, finding additional defenses to put in place to insulate themselves against this type of attack. Of course, some people make it way too easy for the attacker to guess their password. Every year, a company goes out on the internet and posts a list of the most commonly used passwords for people's internet accounts. How does this company get the passwords that you and I use for our internet accounts, you might ask? They get it from hackers. You see, when a hacker breaks into a computer network, one of the things they try to do is get the password database. And if they're successful, they'll use the accounts and passwords for whatever purposes they intend. And then when they're finished, they'll post those passwords on the internet for other attackers to use. Think of that, hackers being helpful. <laughs> anyway, this company then goes out to the site where all these are posted. There are millions of them out there, by the way and compiles a list of the most commonly used passwords for each calendar year. What do you think the most commonly used password was for the year 2018? No, silly, it was not password. That was number two. The most commonly used password for 2018 was 123456. Now, before you laugh at the silliness of somebody using 123456 for their account password, think about this. How many of you have ever used 1234 as your cell phone lock code? Don't raise your hands. <laughs> I do not want to know what your cell phone lock code is. But that's the point. Most people view passwords as a hindrance rather than as a strategic protection. So they choose passwords that are easy to type and easy to remember. And that's why our humanity puts us at risk. For you and me, proper cybersecurity starts with choosing good passwords. Choosing a good password requires that we acknowledge our humanity and we resist the urge to take the easy route. Acknowledge and resist sounds like the mantra of a cult, doesn't it? The cult of cybersecurity, perhaps. Ooh, I should make t-shirts. 
The secret to choosing a good password, of course, is choosing a password that is easy for you to remember, but difficult for other people to guess or crack. Now, of course, most of us have so many passwords to remember, we come up with a scheme to help us remember them. Problem is, that scheme often uses information that's very personal to us, that people could gather about us, things like names of our family members, our pets, or favorite sports teams or hobbies. This information is available on our social media accounts. So if we eliminate the ability to use personal information about us, it becomes much more difficult for us to choose passwords that are hard for an attacker to get. These days, passwords have evolved into passphrases because they're much longer and much harder to guess or crack. A passphrase is a series of words, such as the line from a favorite song or several common words all mashed together. Using the concept of a passphrase and keeping in mind the easy-to-remember requirement, a couple of examples of good passphrases for somebody like me would be these. And once you've chosen good passphrases for your accounts, you also want to use a technique called two-factor authentication to ensure that even if the attacker does somehow get your password, he won't be able to use it to log in and get your information. But that's a topic in a talk for another day. And finally, we need to all acknowledge that all of us are targets. If we expect to be targeted, it will make us much more skeptical of those unsolicited emails that we get and offers of free gifts. The attacks that I've described here today are what cybersecurity experts call social engineering attacks. Social engineering is, in essence, an attacker taking advantage of one or more of these basic human characteristics that I've identified to get an individual a target to carry out actions on their behalf or give them information that they shouldn't have. Attackers leveraging social engineering attacks are how many of the organizations examined in the beginning were compromised. The internet is amazing, loaded with information to learn and sites to explore. The vast trove of data and the opportunity that it represents appeals to our humanity. But when it comes to clicking on links, opening files, choosing passwords, and inserting things into our computer, perhaps we can all be a little less human. If we're conscious of our humanity when using the internet, we'll be able to reap all the benefits that it offers without realizing the pitfalls. We won't be the subject of cybersecurity attacks. Instead, our experience with the internet will be much more like the example of the consistent place kicker that we looked at in the beginning. It's good! Thanks, and have a great day. Stay secure.